What's up guys, welcome back. We have another absolute classic on the menu today. I'll be showing you my recipe for catfish po' boys. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell, enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. First things first, we're gonna get started with some beautiful catfish fillets that I got from my local fish market. We're gonna season them up with a little all-purpose seasoning. If you haven't grabbed this yet, the link is in the description box below. Otherwise, you can use a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Really, you can use whatever you like on seafood. But again, a little blend of all-purpose seasoning here, and then we're gonna go down with some Cajun seasoning as well. Make sure that we adequately season both sides of the fish. As always, guys, the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. So now we're going down with that Cajun seasoning. Make sure you season from up high, that way you get good surface area coverage. And then we're gonna flip them over and season the other side as well. The real goal here, guys, is to season the fish adequately and use a blend of seasoning that you enjoy. There we go. Moving on to our egg wash. So we're gonna crack three eggs into a mixing bowl and then we're gonna add about a quarter cup of whole milk. You could also use buttermilk if you want it as well. There we go, there's that whole milk. And of course, we gotta use a little Louisiana hot sauce, about a tablespoon or so of that. Break out your whisk and beat those eggs like they said something about your mother. There we go, that's nice and blended. And we can set that aside and now we're gonna make our remoulade sauce. So we're going in with about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. You guys know I love my Dukes. Nice and simple, we're going in with some sweet relish. You could also use dill relish if you don't want any sweetness here. I actually like a little bit of sweetness in this. To kind of counteract the uh, hot sauce we're gonna add. You also wanna go in with some Dijon mustard or Creole mustard if you can find that as well as a teaspoon or two of fresh lemon juice. And some worst word in the world sauce. A few dashes of that. And that Louisiana hot sauce. You can adjust the seasoning to your preference, guys. If you want it to be a little bit more spicy, you can add a little bit more hot sauce. I'm gonna add a little smoked paprika also for some color and some Cajun seasoning. And then a little bit of all-purpose seasoning as well. That's a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Make sure our sauce is nice and flavorful. Give that a good mix until everything is well combined, as you see here. And then we're gonna pop that in the refrigerator until we need it a little bit later. And now we're moving on to our flour mixture. So we're gonna use equal parts yellow cornmeal and all-purpose flour, about a cup or so each. We're gonna mix that together, make sure that those two ingredients are well combined. And then we're gonna season this mixture to taste. So we're gonna go in with all-purpose seasoning or a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. We're also gonna add some Cajun seasoning. If you want this to be spicy, you could add a little cayenne here as well. Really use whatever seasoning you enjoy. The key here though, guys, is to make sure that you taste your flour mixture because if you don't, you're kind of just guessing. And usually when you're guessing, you're gonna end up being wrong. So if you taste your flour and know that it's seasoned properly, then you know that it's gonna taste good when it comes out of the oil. Next, we're moving on to one of the stars of the show, this beautiful loaf of French bread. French bread is critical when making a po' boy. It's really not technically a po' boy if you don't use French bread. Go to your local bakery and find a nice loaf of French bread. You wanna take a serrated knife and cut down the middle like you see me doing right here. Don't cut all the way through, but just enough that you can fold it over like so. We're gonna preheat our oven to 400 degrees and gently toast the bread. You don't want it to be too crunchy, but you want the outside to have a little bit of bite to it and the inside to remain nice and soft. Just a few minutes in the oven which gives us just enough time to prepare our frying station. So here we have our seasoned fish, our egg wash, our seasoned flour, and a plate to place the fish on after they've been breaded. So start by taking your fish, placing them in that egg wash, make sure that it's well coated, and then strain off any excess egg wash and go directly into that seasoned flour. Make sure that's well coated in the flour, ensure that there's no bald spots, and just make sure that it's, you know, coated on all sides and then we're gonna place that on a plate. And you wanna let that sit for about 10 minutes, that way the flour has time to really adhere to the fish. This will ensure that you have a nice crispy piece of fish and none of your flour falls off and burns up at the bottom of your fryer. Which gives us just enough time to prepare our vegetables. So I'm gonna thin slice some tomato. A serrated blade works really well when slicing tomato. I'm not a huge fan of tomatoes personally, but I do like them on a sandwich. So we're gonna thin slice these just like so. Looks thin enough to me. And then we're gonna use some nice shredded romaine lettuce. You can use iceberg or whatever lettuce you really like. I like romaine, it has a better color, better crunch. 
So we have some romaine, we have some sliced tomato, we have some lemon, and now we're gonna get our fryer started. So we're going into a large pot with about a liter or two of peanut oil or vegetable oil, whatever you wanna use. Get that oil up to 350 degrees like so. And then we're gonna place that fish into the oil, laying away from you to ensure you don't you know, have any splatter and burn yourself, always protect yourself. And then you wanna move them around a little bit to ensure they're not sticking to the bottom of the fry or sticking to each other. You don't want them to burn. And just a few minutes per side, these cook up really quickly. We've got a beautiful golden brown. Say it with me guys, looking good. Flip them over once or twice just to make sure they're cooking evenly. And then once they're all done, we're gonna remove them and place them on a wire rack to allow them to drain. I prefer doing that versus putting them on a paper towel because the paper towel will get soggy and eventually make your fish soggy also. And we want them to stay nice and crispy. Those are absolutely beautiful, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is one of my favorite sandwiches. I'm gonna load it up with that sauce that we made. I suggest you do the same. Go heavy with it, don't be shy. I'm a both sides of the bread kind of guy, so we're gonna lather up both sides like so. And we're throwing two fish fillets on each sandwich because why the hell not? Oh man, this is gonna be good. I can't wait for you guys to try this one. Let me know in the comments if you plan on making this recipe. There's one catfish fillet, there's two. Oh man, that looks good. Going down with our shredded romaine lettuce. Nice and bright, add some, you know, little texture to the to the sandwich. And then we're gonna go down with a couple pieces of thin sliced tomato. If you hate tomato, I understand you can leave it off. Uh, I do like the, you know, the color that it provides and I enjoy the flavor also. Going down with some fresh squeezed lemon juice. This is gonna be packed with flavor, guys. Oh my goodness. Gotta give me a taste test. Gotta hit with a little bit of that Louisiana hot sauce. It's only right. Don't be shy with that either. And that, my friends, is a catfish po' boy. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. And there's nothing left to do but give this thing a taste test. And I already know it's gonna be good, but I'm gonna eat it. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see what we got. Oh man. Definitely going in for a second bite. This sandwich is crazy good, guys. Definitely give this one a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.